He has this penchant for, for conducting, you know, risky, reckless acts to show that he can sort of get away with it. It's part of asserting his, his, mm -hmm. his ego, and he's done this repeatedly. There's no excuse for what he did here. The lead candidate for the Republican nomination for president is going to hit a couple of troubles with the new 37 count indictment that was sent down by special counsel Jack Smith this week. Uh, we are looking, I believe on Tuesday, for Donald Trump to be arraigned formally down in Florida. Uh, but I want to take a listen to Jack Smith as he gives a summary of the why, the who, what, when, where, and why former President Donald Trump has been indicted yet for a second time. Today, an indictment was unsealed, charging Donald J. Trump with felony violations of our national security laws, as well as participating in a conspiracy to obstruct justice. And I invite everyone to read it in full to understand the scope and the gravity of the crimes charged. My office will seek a speedy trial in this matter, consistent with the public interest and the rights of the accused. We very much look forward to presenting our case to a jury of citizens in the Southern District of Florida. However this plays out, Donald Trump is not above the law. And this is really what so many conservatives around the country are asking this country to do. They're asking this country to completely ignore the fact that Donald Trump was laughably careless and intentionally deceptive with national security documents. Now, whether this reaches to a level for conservatives where they're willing to turn on Donald Trump, very few have been willing to. Attorney General or former Attorney General William Barr came out on uh, CBS and spoke out against the president and spoke in favor of Jack Smith's investigation, saying that the investigation gave due deference to the president of the United States. So there are very few Republicans, but very highly named Republicans William Barr, who came out against the president. Based on the facts, as the facts come out, I think over time people will see that this is not a case of the Department of Justice, you know, conducting a witch hunt. In fact, they approached this very delicately and with deference to the president. And this would have gone nowhere had the president just returned the documents. But he jerked them around for a year and a half. And the question is, did he deceive them? And if there's evidence of that, uh, I think people will start to see that this says more about Trump than it does the Department of Justice. And that is that he, uh, he, he's so egotistical that he has this penchant for, for conducting, you know, risky, reckless acts to show that he can sort of get away with it. It's part of asserting his, his, mm -hmm. his ego. And he's done this repeatedly at the expense of all the people who depend on him to conduct the public's business in an honorable way. And, you know, we saw that with both impeachments and there's no excuse for what he did here. For the most part, Republicans have coalesced around the former president and this seems to be helping his case to um, become the next nominee for the Republican party. And so we'll be interested in seeing exactly how the the timeline for this trial plays out because it clearly is going to have a significant impact on the primaries, the primary season that we are getting ready to go into. With attorney, uh, former Attorney General William Barr stating this, this is a clear indication of members of the, the Republican establishment lining up against Donald Trump. This is the one opportunity that the establishment of the Republican Party has to finally sever ties. This is their only opportunity that the establishment, the former establishment of the Republican Party that existed prior to Donald Trump, this is their last opportunity to finally rid themselves of the scourge that is Donald Trump. We saw Chris Christie come out last week announcing that he was going to run for president and his choice for a strategy was to very directly attack the president, the former president. This lets me know again that the Republican establishment is coalesced around Ron DeSantis. The tricky part at this point is that Ron DeSantis has to find a way to make it appear that he is going to support Donald Trump through this while simultaneously benefiting from the possibility that the president could be um, found guilty in this case. He has already been indicted, but it's very likely and very possible that Donald Trump, considering the, the, the cavalierness of Donald Trump's actions, the, it, the absurdity of it.